Hello and welcome to the third video in this series showing you how to make a Space Invaders style game in Scratch. In this episode you will learn to use sprite cloning to make laser shots that the spaceship will fire at aliens in the game. Now to get started we need to create a new sprite, name it Laser and go to the costume editor. Our laser sprite is going to be really simple, just make sure you're working in vector mode and draw a simple box with the outline and fill colours that you want. You might find it helpful to zoom in so that you can see your sprite's centre point because it's really important that we draw our laser sprite as close to the centre as possible. Now your laser might be a little bit big once you've made it and that's fine, you could either resize it in the costume editor or you could just change its size down here to something uh, more appropriate. That looks pretty good in relation to uh, the size of my spaceship. So once we've got the laser looking as we want it, we need to go to the code editor and drag in a when I receive start level hat from the events box. So here's my events and when I receive and I'm going to change that to when I receive start level. Now for our laser to work we want it to always be listing out for whether the space bar has been pressed and if so it's going to create a clone of itself. Now doing that means that we can have more than one laser shot on the screen at one time. So let's drag in a forever loop from control because we always want to be listening and then we're going to want to bring in an if to test if the space bar has been pressed. So if we go to sensing and we can say if key space pressed. Okay, so when we start the level, continuously start listening if the space bar is being pressed. And if the space bar is being pressed, we want to create a clone. So if we go to control, uh, we can grab the create clone of myself and drop it in there. So this has created code that's going to make uh, more and more laser shots appear whenever the space bar is pressed. Uh, but we need to determine, well, that's fine, but they actually need to do something when they appear on the screen. So to do that, we're going to add some code uh, to tell the laser sprites what it should do once it's been created as a clone. So let's make some space and let's drag the when I start as a clone hat. That's also from control. So when I start as a clone, and then we want to uh, tell it to go to the location of the spaceship. So I'm going to go motion and I'm going to do go to. And instead of random position, I'm going to choose go to spaceship. So it will now appear at the center point of the spaceship. And that's why it was really important that we set the lasers uh, to be built around its center point as well. Then we want to make the laser uh, travel upwards along the screen, uh, so we're going to need to add some code that repeats until the Y position of the laser has gone beyond, say, the edge of the screen. So that's like 150 or 160 or something like that. So to do that, we're going to um, add a repeat. So we go to control and we're going to have a repeat until. So whatever code we put in here is going to keep happening until a certain condition in here is met and the condition that we're going to set is we're going to use an operator, use a greater than and we're going to say until if I go to motion the Y position, that's its sort of vertical height of the laser is greater than 160. So keep doing this stuff until the Y position of the laser beam is greater than 160 and what do we want to do? Well we want to change the Y position by 10. And so to test that this works, I can just click on when I start as a clone. If I click once, you'll see a laser beam that comes out of the spaceship and goes to the top of the screen. And once it's reached the top of the screen, we would like it to disappear and then sort of be deleted from the game. So it's not using up memory. So I can just go to looks, grab a hide, and I can go to control and delete this clone. And if I try it again now, it gets to the top of the screen and it disappears. Now because I've put a hide here, um, I'm going to need to put a show at the start. So if I drop a show, otherwise Scratch will never start showing it again. So if I click it one more time, now it shows and disappears. Show, disappear, show, disappear. And if I click on when I receive start level or indeed if I press my green flag 
I can practice this by I can press the uh, space bar and you'll see my laser beams appearing but if you look closely the laser beams are really close together if I hold the space down I get a whole stream of them now that might just make our game a little bit too easy so actually we want to add a little bit of a delay uh, in order to space them out so that's really easy all I need to do is inside my when I receive start level in this loop I'm just going to put a delay here when the space button's pressed so that there's a pause before it tests again uh, so if I go to control wait one second which is quite a long time so I'm going to change that to 0 0.1 seconds if I press stop and start that again now if I hold down my uh, space bar you'll see that there's a delay between the ammo being fired. Now one thing you might notice is that the ammo is appearing sort of in front of the spaceship um, in the foreground which doesn't look very slick so actually we can fix that by just going to spaceship and when the spaceship starts and it shows just go to looks and drag in go to front layer. Okay and if I stop and start again you'll notice that now the laser beams are coming from behind the spaceship. It just looks a little bit better. So another thing that we can do to make the game a bit more enjoyable and challenging is that we can actually limit how much ammunition the player has so that they can't just hold down the space bar and knock out all the aliens. Um, so we're going to use a variable which stores the amount of ammo that the player has. So to do that let's go to variables and we're going to create a new variable called ammo. And this can also be just for this sprite and press OK. So I've got my uh, laser ammo and it shows in my readout up here that it's currently set to zero. So when we start our level we probably want to set that to be something like 100 or 50 so I'm going to grab my set block into here and I'm just going to set that to 50 so that when we start the level if I stop and start again now I have 50 but of course as I shoot that number isn't changing and that's because we haven't written any code to change it. So let's do that. All we need to do is get a change ammo, so grab that block and drop it inside our forever block along with um, our when the space button is pressed. So when the space button is pressed, create a clone of myself and change ammo by minus one. So that decreases the value of ammo. So let's test that. And you can see it's going down, but that will keep going and going and going and it won't actually stop at zero it will just go into negative numbers and that's not really helpful so we need to change our code here that it only shows a new clone when the space bar is pressed and the value of ammo is greater than none so to do that we can go to operators grab an and plop that into the left hand side drop that into the if socket and then here and we're going to say um, we need a greater than and we're going to say and the value of ammo is greater than zero so back to variables I can grab the value of ammo is greater than zero and so that now says look forever if the space bar is pressed and we've got more than no ammo then create a clone of myself so let's try that press green flag start it again and as I'm shooting my ammo score goes down and once that reaches zero it should stop showing any more ammo okay and no matter how much I press my spacebar there's nothing coming out now this sort of display of how much ammo we've got doesn't look the most professional uh, let's make our game look a little bit better by adding a kind of info bar at the top of the screen and uh, in that info bar we're gonna have some key stats like how much ammo we've got what the current score is uh, maybe how many aliens are left to shoot. So we're going to create a new sprite, so hover over the uh, new sprite button, go to paint and we're going to create a new sprite and I'm going to call it info bar. And it's really important I said it's x and y values to be 0, 0. And I need to zoom out and uh, I'm going to create just a, literally this is just going to be a bar, a block with some words for each of the different um, values that I want to show. So I'm just going to do a black block, a uh, black box. So I'm going to take my color and brightness right down. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to have a transparent outline. So I've just got a box and I'm going to click 
and drag my box in and I can move it because I'm using vector mode I can move it around and just make sure it fills the top of my sprite and you should see that you get oh it hasn't quite gone to the top you should see now you get a black bar across the top of your game uh, now in here we're going to add some text for each of the different elements we want so I'm going to click on the text tool and you can choose whatever font you like uh, but for a nice retro game effect I would like to choose pixel and I need to choose the color for my text so I'm going to make it stand out so I might use like red or maybe like an orange and I just need to click somewhere in here maybe it's helpful to zoom in uh, click somewhere in my bar and just type ammo in capitals and I can move that zoom out a bit now you won't be able to see it because it's being hidden so let's move that out of the way there we go ammo you can see that now ammo and um, I'm actually going to add just to prepare ourselves for later I'm going to double click on that so I can carry on writing I add lots and lots of spaces and I'm going to write um, score and lots of spaces and I'm going to write aliens uh, now I'm going to get rid of these on a Mac, whenever you put lots of spaces, sometimes it gives you a dot. So I'm going to delete those. And uh, I might just need to get rid of a few spaces, make a bit more space for my aliens. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, that's everything done that I need to do for that, I think. And I want to make this ammo variable appear sort of here. But again, I want it to look a bit better. So if I right click and choose a large readout, get a nice score like that I can drop it on and now I'll have ammo and it's going to show me how much ammo I have so if I press green flag start my game I can see it says ammo 50 and as I shoot it goes down and that looks so much better than um, how it did before now there's only a little bit of code we need to add for the, t the info bar but basically we want it to be hidden when the game's not in progress and only showing when the uh, game is so if I just go to code for the info bar I can do a, just a couple of things. I'm going to go to events and I'm going to say when I receive hide game elements, I just want to hide because I don't want to be showing when, when the, the title screen is showing or something else. And I'm also going to have a when I receive start level, I'm going to want it to show. And just in case someone has clicked on it and it's moved or something then um, I'm going to just set motion and go to zero zero in there as well just so that it's always reset so we're really nearly done uh, the last thing I think it'd be really nice to add to our laser is some sound so um, clicking on the laser again and being back uh, in our code editor if we go to the sounds tab we're gonna get like a laser sort of sound so get rid of the pop don't want that and uh, hover over where it says choose a sound and we're just going to click and we can search for pew which sounds like a laser so that's the sound we want let's click on that go back to code and we just say when I start as a clone if we go sounds uh, start sound pew so uh, we can press green flag give this a go And that seems to be working really well. So uh, the very final thing then is we um, also need to add for the laser. We also need to add a uh, when the game's not showing hide kind of stuff. So um, we're going to do just like we did for our title bar or our info bar. We're going to grab an event. And when I receive hide game elements, we're going to want to do a few things. First of all, we want to um, hide so we're not visible. We also want to hide this variable readout. So we're going to go to variables and we're going to go hide variable ammo. And because we've done that, we're going to need to make sure that when we've got uh, when I receive start level, we want to show variable ammo. OK, because again, we always when we hide, we always have to do a show again. And we want to stop this script running this forever loop. There's no point the computer continuously doing this because we're supposed to be not playing the game so we're going to go to control stop and instead of all choose other scripts in this sprite so that will kill that so if I click it you'll see that that forever loop has stopped and finally we're just going to delete 
the clone of the laser beam uh, that's currently active. So that's everything for our laser. You should now have a spaceship that you can move left and right and fire lasers whenever the space key is pressed. Um, you've used a variable to implement limited ammo, which you can set to whatever value you like to make your game easier or harder. You could even add power-ups to give players more ammo um, just by altering the value of that ammo variable. In the next video, we're going to start the process of adding aliens to the game, first by designing them, and then in the video after that, we're going to write an algorithm to programmatically draw them on the screen in the right location so that you don't need to painstakingly, pixel by pixel, lay them out yourself.